What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Team Solemn Circuit Live video. Turn on the left side here. We have Rika Sanavalon Romage going up against Unchained on the right side here. Before we dive in, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, channel a lot. We're trying to get to 10k here. We are going to be starting off right off the bat with Unchained going first with a copy of Abomination Prison. Searching for a copy of... It looks like we're going to be searching for a copy of a trap here. We originally started off by searching for that copy of the Shavara, but unfortunately, you know, maybe we needed a card to pop uh, instead. We're going to be activating the effect of the Dark Beckoning Beast here. Going to be normal summoning it, activating the effect for the copy of the gates. This is going to be unchained with the U-Bell cards with the four thrones as well, or the three thrones with a copy of Terraforming alongside the Squirmer. We're going to be also playing the Dark Beckoning Beast package over that copy of the tour guides and stuff like that. This is also a GoPro match as well. If you guys want to be watching that as well, I can tag it in the video comments. I'm going to be showing us the live experience that we are going to be seeing. And we're going to be linking both of those away for a copy of Yama, which can then search for that copy of Shavara. And we're going to be still activating the effect of Barua here, discarding the, destroying the copy of Prison. So having double Prison and the copy of Beckoning Beast in the hand, our hand would have been absolutely smacked with Troll and Lockbird if that card was being played in the opponent's main deck here. We're going to be summoning out the copy of the uh, Shayama off that Prison Pop, and then we're going to be activating the effect of Shawarma, destroying that copy of Rua. There is a cool line where you can actually discard that copy of the uh, Shawarma with that copy of Gates, summon back out the copy of the Beast, which can then get us the Trap set as well. Um, but we're going to be suiting to summon out the copy of Disaster Dog here, and we can actually go for a Rage alongside a Caesar line, um, and then with a Trap set up when we discard that copy as well. Uh, or we can just go into a copy of Rage here if we wanted to. Um, which can then set up a trap. We have multiple lines that we can do. Shyama can then pop the copy of Disaster, which can then bring back out that copy of the Shawarma. Multiple lines that we can do, but choose and go for the Caesar and then go for the Rage. I think that was a little bit of a misplay there. We probably should have done the Shyama pop myself uh, to get that trap set up. But we have a trap in the hand already, uh, so we set that there. And then just pass turn on this. Sometimes you want to keep more traps in the hand or in the deck as well if you already are going to be losing. You know, you kind of want to have access to all of them at the same time. But I feel like if we don't have both traps set up, we are kind of in a losing situation. We already have gone through one trap. We have two in the hand or we have another hand trap. It's, it's kind of like unfortunate there. And we really don't realize in the moment what lines we could have done. Uh, we see the Sun Seed Loki being normal summoned here, linking away for that copy of the uh, the the big tree there. I think it's Dryas searching for that copy of the Sunvine sewing. And we do have a princess in the hand as well. We're gonna be seeing Sunvine sewing activates effects and. We do simply just chain rage to this, getting rid of that dryas to go for that SP. And then we see them summing up that sun, 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 uh, sun whatever, loci here. Um, and then we're going to be activating the effect of the SP to banish it. Essentially just wanting to cut them off from all access to plant monsters here. Um, and then we're going to be seeing the aromage blend going to activate its effects. And we send the princess here. You know, when you're playing against Rika, especially going first, you have to play against, you have to play very weirdly um, as well. But we summon out, or we put this, the wind here, and then we had realized that we have lost the game, uh, which is kind of unfortunate there. I think we had the Reborn Trap, if I'm not mistaken, and we had a Rakea in the hand as well. Um, yeah, we could have set the escape up so we wanted to pop additional card, but like Rika is a very weird deck to play. Or play against, like I should say. I, I never really want to play Rika. I feel like that deck just doesn't really fit my play style. I like Branded. I like Unchained. I like Melodious. Those kind of decks make me uh, like the mid-range type decks rather than like the heavy combo, Swarm the Field, yada, yada, yada decks that we do see a lot of the times in that uh, heavy combo build. Like Rika is a lot like Snake Eyes, but Snake Eyes is a little bit more suppressive by being able to summon out those big body monsters with that like heavy, heavy combo type builds. 
it is cool to see how Rika has evolved around like different formats. You know, with the new plant cards being announced, we have the Aromage cards now in the deck. Um, and then, like, of course, Sun, Vi Sun Seeds getting hit, which is a crazy hit, you know, hitting essentially a deck that was doing nothing until we saw Rika Con Con come out. And, like, that card is just busted. You know, I, I will stand to this day saying that card needs to be hit. That's just an insane card. Being able to pair it up with Sheet and then also being able to search for the Sheet is like, what the heck? And also with Princess being able to tribute off your opponent's monster. Like, what what is going on here? Um, but we are going to be seeing Rika now choose to go first with a double Ash Blossom in hand and a copy of Sunset Loki, which is going to be a crazy normal summon. They also are playing Still the Unexpected Die. Being able to summon that out is quite nice here as well. Licking off into the driest, going to be able to search for that copy of Sunvine Sewing. And we can then act for the effect, paying a thousand, they're gonna gain a thousand by summoning out the healer. We're also gonna summon out the twin here, bringing essentially a link for materials on the field. We're gonna go twin and then a copy of Dryas, summon out the healer, gaining 300. So now bringing them up to 83, and we're also summoning out the copy of Loki here. We then link away into a copy of Jasmine, and this could be a good time for a Nibiru if we had it. Uh, we're gonna activate the effect of Jasmine, and we hit that with a copy of, or no. On the summon of Jasmine, we hit that copy with an Imperm. We should have waited for them to tribute off the effect there, so they would have used the once per turn effect, uh, but that was a bit of a misplay that we do mention in the POV. It just shows you like a little bit of different stances that like, you know, we do make mistakes, uh, and then in the POV, you realize it at the time. When now, while we're watching it over, it's like, oh, I realize it almost immediately. It just shows a different experience, like some people don't really enjoy that, but they can go for the second copy of Jasmine here, which can then activate its effect, chipping off that body. Now, if we would have waited for them to actually use that effect already, we would have lost a body there, uh, and then making them not have the second body to chip it off. Regardless, they still had the copy of Lily Boria they could have activated, so they could play through it regardless, um, but it still definitely hurts. We're going to go for the Lily Boria effects, then we're going to be sending that copy of Sun, uh, Sunseed Loki to be able to search for that field spell. Field spell is going to let us also then search for the Regulus. We can link away for that copy of the Link 3 Aromage, and then we can search for the, uh, I think it's Blend once again. We're then going to activate Regulus as a form of protection by equipping that Lily Boria here, and now we are immune to all hand traps. Nibiru no more. Um, and we haven't activated the effect of Petal yet because it does lock us into the plant monsters. So, you know, being able to summon a Regulus prior is just definitely going to be useful. We're going to then activate the effect of Blend, sending the copy of Ash Blossom to set the trap onto the field. It's setting it in the graveyard so we can use it for fusion material. We can then activate the effect of the Blend here to fusion into a copy of the uh, Romage Fusion, which also lets us use that effect of the uh, Link monster here, which is quite nice. And then we can activate the effect of Petal here to search for a copy of Mudon. That's going to let us have access to the dreadful Rick Con Con. Uh, and we're going to be losing it just like this. We're going to be seeing the Mudon summon itself out, activating the effect, searching for the Con Con. Con Con should then be placed onto the field, which can then activate its effects, placing either the Glamour or the Sheet. The Sheet is a form of interruption because we already have the Glamour access. Or I guess we don't need to have Glamour access because we already have everything else. We can then activate the effect of the Glamour because we already have it in the hand here. Searching for the copy of Primula and the Princess. So now we have Princess and Primula, which can also then go for the level 4, going up into it, which can then be a rank 4, which are the Strena. Strena can then add back, which is just crazy here. We can add back essentially whatever we want to. We can add back a Glamour for the follow-up turn. We can activate a Mudan if we wanted to as well. Most likely going for that Glamour there because we do have essentially enough for follow-up here, which is quite nice. We also now have access to the Princess in the Graveyard, which is very crazy here, and the Petal as well, which can summon out during the end phase if we do last that long. So we can activate the effect of the Winds to... Then we're going to chain the Fusion there. And, yeah, there's, there's no way we can win this. If we have a Dark Ruler no more and a Cosmic, maybe. But they just pass turn on that. So we have to deal with, essentially, a Con Con, which is going to be then using our copy. Uh, well, they have multiple options here. So they have Street, or they have Sheet, which can then tribute our monster and steal one of our monsters. They have Princess, which they can then go for the Strena, which can then summon out a Tribute. They have a Regulus as well. Um, and they have an Ash Blossom in the hand. Quite nice. I do say so myself. They do chain Ash to this prosperity, making sure that we can't dig for cards. And we do have a Nightmare Throne to activate. You know, with three cards left in the hand, this card's probably going to resolve. Um, 
which will let us search for either a beast or a squirmer. If we search for the dark beckoning beast, it's most likely going to be interrupted as a good normal, but we have to bait it anyway, so we're going to normal summon it out, activating the effect, and this can search for the gates. If we let us search for the gates here and we normal summon a monster, Sheet's going to be able to steal our cards, and then we're essentially going to be uh, on zero once again, and leaving that Omni Negate as Regulus and the Princess for a hand trap as well. This could be a good princess target if they wanted to, but it's not going to do very much for them anyways. You know, letting us get that second body on the field and deck thinning our deck kind of like hurts. Like they now know like more cards that we have in the hand essentially. We also have a copy of Shyama, which we are getting a little bit further for ourselves. You know, being able to act with that effect. I think we also have a duster in the hand, which is trying to bait out that copy of the uh, Regulus. Um, so... We go for a Typhon angle here, and this is going to let us activate that copy of Duster, essentially forcing that Regulus, which is gaining attack, so it cannot activate here. So kind of try to play through this very weirdly. Um, Regulus is gaining attack with that equipped of the Liliborea, make it not able to actually activate. Um, so going for that copy of Typhon makes it so that we can now use our, uh, our Duster here. They do chain the trap card. And we can chain cheat if they wanted to. We're gonna chain cheat, tributing off the copy of Strena to take that copy of Typhon. I mean, you might as well, because it also will trigger the effect of uh, the Strena, and then we also get to Reborn back out the Aromage with that trap, and we just submit the feet there, realizing that we have definitely lost. We can't summon it anymore. You know, Gates is not going to do very much for us. We are going to be dumping a Shyama to, what, not Reborn, because we are not allowed to. Um, not bought the win that we were looking for, but, you know, we still were able to play. It just shows you that there are ways that you can play the other cards, and we were kind of hoping that we would have sent Regulus Negate um, be alive, but in the case that it wasn't, we still have to make a board. Like a lot of times, you see a lot of players just scoop it up, and not realizing that they can win. Now, if we didn't have the Ash Blossom in the hand, and we let Prosperity resolve, we would have had an extra card to play with. You know, having the Shyama on the hand was not the greatest, but it's still the board is breakable if you play it correctly. Now, we were not breaking that board. That board was kind of crazy. Now, they still had Princess in the graveyard that would have been able to trigger it out whatever they want to. Um, and but like, if we would have been able to resolve that Duster. Not let them reborn out their Jasmine. It'd be like, okay, well, it's winnable, but not easily. But moving on to game three, we're going to be seeing the Unchained deck choosing who's going to go first or second. Definitely choosing to go first here. Now, if we can set up a nice board... We most likely will be just winning the game right away. So diving on into the all-important game three. And we see double Ash unexpected die in the hand of the Rika player. And then we see Unchained Abomination activate here. We're going to be searching for that copy of Shavara. Having already a trap maybe being set. We also see a Prosperity in the hand as well. We're going to normal summon a Dark Beckoning Beast activating its effects here. And that's going to go through searching for the copy of Gates. I feel like in this case, we probably should have Ashed this um, by knowing what's in the hand. We're going to activate the Gates, searching for the copy of the gate of the Beckoning Beast. We're going to then normal summon the Beckoning Beast with the effect of the second Beckoning Beast here. And then we can go for a copy of Yama here. Yama can then activate its effects, letting us search for a Unchained Monster. Going to be most likely a copy of the Arua. And then we're going to be activating Prosperity here as well. Now you see this hand, once again, would have also lost heavily to Droll. Unfortunately, the Dark Beckoning Beast package kind of lets you do that. Uh, we're going to be banishing just three here, and we do see Ash, Valor, and Abomination Prison. Choosing that Ash Blossom because it is a better Ricard versus the Rika. You know, Valor is very mediocre versus that deck. You know, there's like a lot of weird spots. You can hit the copy of Jasmine if you wanted to once it activates effects. We already did that earlier, and it shows it's not really to pan out very well. So we're going to activate the effect of the gates, or we're going to set a card actually instead. Activate the Arua here, 
destroying the copy of Escape, summoning out the Arua, and then we're going to act for the effect of Escape here, and I wonder what they're saving Ash for. They say, what do they know in hand? We'd say Ash and Arua. And I feel like this time they choose to Ash, but I, assuming at this point they realize it's a little bit too late and that the Ash is just going to essentially loop their hand. But they have double Ash. So they're going to choose to Ash here. That's going to stop the Shyama access, which is fine. But we're going to be just chaining the effect of Shawarma here, destroying the copy of Arua. And we're still playing through this regardless. We're going to see summon out Shayama. And at this point, we can just link away into the Rage with the copy of Yama and the Shawarma here. Or we're going to go for another copy of Caesar. This is definitely not the right play. Um, we're going to be seeing the Gate summon out the copy of the uh, Beast by discarding the copy of Prosperity. And then we can link away into the copy of Rage. Now, this is viable, but unfortunately, it's going to make it so that we cannot uh, set any traps here. We're going to Dark Ruler no more which is uh, interesting here. Now, if we would have played correctly, we would have had the escape, which we would have been able to pop both of those cards, letting us also set up and then have the rage as well. Um, but we're going to be seeing Ice the die here, Ice Bates effects. We're going to be ashing that, which is quite interesting. And then we're going to notice on a petal here. Petal can then activate effects, searching for the copy of Mudon. And then we have the dreadful Con Con once again. We're going to activate the moon on. We are going to be chaining the effect of Caesar to just negate. Uh, it's not going to actually resolve, but it's going to have the trap in the graveyard, or, or shawarma in the graveyard, sorry, Shavara, my bad. I know people are getting very upset about that. Uh, we're Let's us set the chamber here. Chances are that they're not going to be able to destroy the chamber. Uh, we're also going to be able to add back something with the rage, which is going to be most likely that copy of Shavara, and then we're also going to be able to summon back that rage when we have the effect of the escape here. And... We we pretend this is throw it, scoop it up as soon as we see the con con, but we are in a winnable position here. We're going to be seeing the effect of sh con con setting the sheet to the deck here, which means they already have the glamour. Glamour can then activate, and we have to choose: do we want to tribute off our opponent's monsters? If we tribute off Caesar, uh, which is to be honest the incorrect play, they should have done the copy of the. Uh, rage because if rage is tributed off it won't get the effect but now when they have to destroy the rage we're going to be able to get the search or i guess the add back with the rage alongside the yama bring back the rage the only way the rage is the correct play is if they can or i guess the caesar is the correct play if they cannot be over it but they definitely can here we're going to then go for the copy of the snowdrop here and then add for the effect tributing off making a gain attack which is going to be quite nice. They're going to enter battle phase, attack with that. And we do have the uh, the uh, the advantage now on the Rika side with that copy of Sheet. Now, if we make sure that we do not have two bodies on the field, they're going to be not able to do very much. So as long as we just keep Rage on rotation, we can be fine. We can then activate the effect of Shyama on the graveyard if we want to pop that card, summon up the copy maybe of Abomination, which we are going to activate the Chamber instead here. Chamber is going to summon up the copy of Yama, which can then trigger activating its effects to search. They're going to read the Shyama. They do have the Ash Blossom in the hand, which is quite nice. I believe this is probably where you choose to Ash. Makes sense. Like in the grind game, we kind of have a situation where we're like, it's kind of, kind of good. They're going to act with the effect of the teardrop to then tribute off the copy of the Yama. And we say, can we read the sheet? We know it's face down. You know, now we have the advantage. We know all the cards on the field. And all we have to deal with is that copy of sheet. There's no princess in the graveyard there, which we are making sure. All we have to deal with is a petal and a sheet and that dreadful con con. So we are looking at what our options are. We're going to set one card here, and then we have the Shyama to destroy that card. We're going to be destroying it, and it is an escape here. Having that trap as a top deck is insane in this. You know, we misplayed last uh, last um, turn, so kind of having a reward here. And we are going to be able to activate the effect of Yama as well as the copy of Escape. 
And let's give someone out the copy of the shawarma as well, or shavara as well, which is going to be able to let us set a trap when it hits the graveyard. So they're kind of forced into like doing something really weird. And we do summon out a copy of the Sarama, which can then be able to set like a Rua and pop that trap as well. Or pop it as well to summon up the copy of the Disaster Dog. So they're kind of forced into a copy using Sheet here. And they definitely want to take that copy of Sarama. But they're going to take the copy of the Shafara instead. And this is like the advantage of not knowing what the deck does. So they're putting Shayama back to the bottom of the deck by tripping it off for cost. And then we can act for the Sarama, discarding or setting the copy of Arua to destroy it. And then we're going to be sending out the copy of the Disaster Dog here. And unfortunately for our opponent misplaying, this is going to be their disaster. Now, the Disaster can then act for the effect using any body on the field. If we want to go into a Yama, which has already been used, we can go for it using that copy of Sh Shavara. And then we can actually put the uh, the Shavara in the graveyard, which can then act for the effect to let us set a trap, um, which is going to be quite nice for us going to maybe go for a copy of Anguish. Uh, what you are going to be seeing us do here, we're going to be seeing the Yama. And it has been negated, but it's not going to matter. We can set the escape so that we have essentially a way to pop that Gon Con. But we still have a good top deck here. And then we can go for an Anguish. And then Anguish can then act with the effect using the the uh, the copy of itself to go for an Abomination. And then we can actually pop it during the battle phase, or pop it during end phase, that Con Con there, and kind of having a good resource. Because we have the Yama on the grave once again, so we can summon with the copy of the, uh, the um, whatever his name is, the Raid, which can then go for an SP. So, we're going to attack for 3,000. Now we're both at equal life points here. And then during the end phase, we are going to be seeing the Petal summon back out. Uh, then we're going to be activating the effect of the Abomination, destroying the copy of Petal here, uh, making it so they cannot use that once again, forcing them to have once again a taunt in their good top deck. So they're going to look at their top deck here, look at their graveyard, and they do have a usable card with a copy of the Rosalina, the Aromage card. That's going to let them search here for a copy of, or it summons out here a copy of my bad, of the Laurel here. And this time we should activate the escape, target the Abomination as well as the copy of the Rosalina and that's going to be destroying itself and then we can activate the effect of Yama to bring out the copy of the Rage. Rage can then activate the effect using itself as the Aroma Laurel to then go for a SP. SP can then banish the copy of the Con Con and they're on zero cards. We're thinking about what we're going to banish here. We could banish the Princess or the Petal here but we are going to choose to banish the pedal because they can't activate the Con Con if they don't have Rika Monster on their field. So now the Con Con doesn't really do anything for them. And we do have SP Little Knight, which is going to be quite nice here. We do normal summon out a copy of Rikea here. And we can just battle phase attack for 31. They did gain 500 with that copy of Laurel, uh, but it's still going to be quite fine for them. They draw for turn once again. And do we see another usable card? It does look like a normal summon, which I have a copy of Princess here. And this is going to be quite nice for them because they can now activate the effect of Con Con, set, setting up a Glamour. They're going to activate the Con Con effect here. We are going to be chaining that copy of SP. And we misplayed once again. We should have chained the Rakea there, popping itself, so they can't go for that copy of the Glamour. Uh, but we are still learning. And that is what it is. So we're going to be able to search for the Princess and the Primula here. And we're going to be summoning back up that copy of SP. And unfortunately for us, we're going to be able to actually beat over that copy of Princess because they are down on life points here. We're going to act for the effect of the Gate, which can then discard the copy of Shyama, summon the copy of Beckoning Beast. And here we are thinking, like, what are we going to choose to do? Um, there's not much that we really have. We can destroy the Beckoning Beast to deal some more damage. But we're going to be attacking with the copy of SP. And then we're going to go for Shyama there to destroy that Beckoning Beast to summon itself out. And we just pass on this, unfortunately. There's nothing else we can really do. 
And we could have dealt more damage. We can go for a Solar Rage, but Solar Rage is not going to be able to go into anything else, which is unfortunate. But they do draw into another Con Con. We're going to see a normal summon of a Primula here. Activating the effect of Con Con once again. We're going to be chaining SP. Using itself and the Primula to then be able to search. And we search for a copy of Glamour once again. And then we're going to activate the, or they may not even be able to activate the Glamour here, which is what they're checking. We're going to activate the Glamour here and they don't have anything they can tribute off because they don't have double targets. So we're going to search for the mood on here, which is quite nice. We're then going to activate the mood on, tributing off that copy of Shyama, summoning itself out. And then we're going to activate the effect, being able to search for another copy of a Riga card, being a, the third copy of Kong Kong, and now we have double in their hand. This is making it so that our draws are going to be a little bit better. And then we can summon out the copy of the Princess here. And we can then go into a copy of the Dance Opponent. So now we're trying to really hit or else we're going to be losing here. And we do see a whiff, unfortunately for us. But they do have the copy of Romage in the graveyard there uh, now, which is quite nice. And then SP is going to resolve summoning itself or resolve here and then summoning itself out. And then we're going to go Battle Phase and that's just going to be enough for game. Where our top deck is a copy of the prison, but we have now, you know, just be able to deal with, unfortunately, summoning with that Primula and Attack Vision is kind of dreadful for them, but they have to just normal summon it. Regardless, hope you're watching the video. We did see a little bit of misplays on both parts. Uh, I am fairly new to the Unchained deck. Once again, you know, bringing it back out. Uh, we were playing it before, but now kind of just changing up the options. We didn't see any of the Princess and the little Doodle Chimera lines, but if you guys want to see more content like this, let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to stay safe. Peace.